This video is looking at uh, models of the atom, looking at hydrogen just a wee bit more and tidying up a few loose ends that are quite useful. Now it works out that if you use the um, that previous formula uh, from the Barmer series and the Lyman series, you can mine it with E equals HF um, as the energy for the um, related to the frequency of a wavelength of wave or a frequency of wave. Um, you can uh, substitute that in and um, you end up with this formula here which talks or shows the energy level or the amount of energy for um, it's, um, <coughs> excuse me the energy actual levels that's what I'm trying to get at um, so where n is the number of the energy levels r is the Rydberg constant again c is the speed of light h is Planck's constant so there's a lot of constants on the top there um, but it's really boiling down this relationship of the amount of energy um, compared to each energy level. And if you substituted numbers in uh, for n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and so forth, up to infinity, um, you'll get the, um, the diagram that I've been drawing quite regularly, which shows that's n equals 1, n equals 2, you can see that in, in n equals 3, Four, five, six, and it starts getting closer and closer together up to n equals infinity where all successive levels um, can fit into the previous level and that's just because of this uh, squared factor, the exponential relationship. Um, so that's that's a very useful expression um, en equals negative h c r over n squared um, to show um, what energy each level is at so that's a single it's not a difference it's not a potential energy difference or anything it's a single energy level so if you needed to find out the energy um, between one and two you'd substitute both one and two into there and subtract one from the other okay and um, the negative sign that relates to um, the the energy given off if you like you can think of it like that as the um, electron falls back down it loses energy and that energy is given off as a photon so um, that's another way of looking. Now another useful energy measurement is the electron volt electron volt and this is defined as the amount of energy um, for uh, one electron uh, accelerated uh, through electric field up to one volt so it's an energy measurement even though it says volts volts is different from energies but it's an electron volt okay, remember voltage is energy over charge in this case the charge we're dealing with is the electron um, so electron times volt EV gives us an energy measurement that's why the electron volt is an energy measurement um, and <coughs> and that specific amount is related to the charge on an electron and it's one volt of of energy so one volt of energy gosh I'm confusing myself on this um, so what we would say is uh, one let's make space one uh, electron volt is equal to um, one EV uh, is equal to uh, 1.6 times, here we have seen this number before, 10 to the minus 19 um, joules. That looks very suspiciously similar to the charge on an electron, doesn't it? And uh, that's because that's what features in our uh, electron volt measurement. So because V is 1 volt and E is the charge on an electron, our energy is therefore going to be the charge on an electron times by one volt, which is how we get this electron volt measurement. I forgot to say why it's most useful. Electron volts most useful because um, we're often dealing with very, very small voltages, uh, energy potential differences. When you're dealing with levels of electrons dropping down charges, it's energy potential per charge um, because we're dealing with the electrons dropping down. That's why electron volts are so useful. Okay, and I think that just about covers it. Um, next we're looking at nuclear reactions. Don't forget to go to the forum and discuss this stuff.